previously, we were repairing this Tempest. If you haven't watched part one, stop! Make sure to watch part one. The link is below, but let's get back where we left off. All right, folks, so the monitor is up. As you can see, there's no deflection. I don't want to leave it like that for too long. We're going to try throwing it in test to see if it changes anything. Or it's in test right now. No. Yeah, that was in test. Basically, we're getting no image on the monitor and no deflection. I'm going to turn it off so it doesn't burn the tube. We've got our red LED on on the monitor board. So we're getting no deflection. So this is a this is a great example. You might think something's wrong with the monitor, but really something's wrong with the game board. Because you know how we can't even coin it up and get it to play. The game board's not working right, so it's not sending the signal out to the monitor. So the monitor's not getting a signal it can use. And so it's not doing anything. So it looks like the monitor's messed up, but really the game board's messed up. So uh, we're going to do a little research. Um, and uh, probably the next thing we're going to do is pull out this monitor, this game board, and uh, clean all of the ROMs and put them back in because it doesn't seem like it's uh, really doing anything. All right, folks, so we've got the PCB out. We've got it on the workbench here. And uh, so I started taking out the chips that are all socketed and cleaning them. So I figured I'd give you a little example. Um, here's a, uh, let me see. Bump, bump. Let's see if I've got a new chip. Yeah, here's a brand new chip. So to give you an idea of what the legs look like. All right, and so when it's new, this metal goes down inside the socket, which is metal, and it grabs both sides, and it makes a good metal to metal connection. And then, after you know, this game, this game came out in what 1980, 1981, something like that, 1982. After all those years, and who the heck knows where this thing's been stored? You saw the condition that this game is in, right? I mean, it's fairly rough. Uh, so who knows what kind of weathering weather conditions it's been in? This is the chip. Like I just pulled out one of the ROM chips that holds the game code, game code, and you see all of this tarnish, basically rust. I don't know if that will focus good. All of that. Now most of these uh, pins were probably still making good electrical connection, but if just one of them wasn't it can't read the chip, it can't run the code, right? And this is the first damn chip. That's how bad the first ROM looks. It's bad enough that we might have to burn some of them new. So what you do is you use a little screwdriver to... Uh, I can't tell if you can even see my screwdriver. There we go. <laughs> I'm at a weird angle here. Use a little screwdriver to carefully lift the chip up out of the socket. And then you get it out and you go, Oh God, it looks horrible. And then you take a file right and you run it along it and basically you are sanding all of the filth off of the pins now you can also do it with an eraser some people do it with a less uh, aggressive thing but really whenever it's this corroded like this one is there's nothing you can do but use a damn file on it I mean that's the only way you're going to get that kind of corrosion off of it and you want to get the pins where they're nice and shiny so something like that right you want it to look pretty good so that's after that's before and then I also um, clean the inside of it so look at the inside look how bad that looks look at that there's no you know probably a ton of those weren't connected so we're gonna hit that up you gotta be real careful you will break the pins off bigger than hell I mean, we often break pins off just doing this. But once you get a little feel for it, it's a little bit easier. And so I'm, basically, I'm scratching all of the stuff off. So it the, the chip's a little bit compromised after you do that because it, it doesn't have its plating the way it's supposed to be from the factory. But really, you don't have any choice, you know? So you could burn a new one. Uh, but typically, for a chip this old, this is a... 2516. I mean, are they even making those anymore? I doubt it. So you'd have to get a, either a new old stock or it's a pull all of something. Of course, these are EEPROMs so that can be erased and reprogrammed. Um, and it's not a bad idea, idea too, while you're doing this, to uh, pop the chip in a chip burner and read it and see if uh, 
if it's still fine. It probably is. ROMs, a lot of times people think if they buy new ROMs, it'll fix it. Well, if they're corroded like this, yeah, it probably will. But usually if you clean them, they're fine. It, usually your problem with a game board isn't a bad ROM. Sometimes it is. But usually it's not. Now this one does have a lot of ROMs on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's got twelve ROMs just on this board. And um, basically, if, if one if one pin isn't connected right, the thing's not going to work right. So you have to go through and ch and clean them all. And then whenever you put them back in the socket, you have to be careful that whenever you push it in, that you don't bend one of the legs underneath the chip. That happens a lot. If the leg isn't quite in there right, whenever you push on it, it'll curl. It'll curl under, and uh, it'll look, sometimes you can't tell by looking at it. It'll look like they're fine because it bent right at the end, and it'll bend over where it's not making contact. So you got to be real careful when you put it in and stare at it and all that. So anyway, this is what I'm going to do on everything, and it's going to take a little while to get everything clean and um, so I can make sure that everything's in the socket like it should be. So I'll come back whenever we get that done. All right, so this is the auxiliary board, which is the back side of the main board, and uh, we have cleaned all the chips clean the connectors and I also th these two boards are connected with this uh, ribbon cable or harness there and so I also went ahead and resoldered all of the pins on it this one I don't even think gets used but and uh, resoldered the pins on that one and then cleaned the pins as well so everything makes good contact and everything looks pretty good it's a pretty clean board everything looks pretty cool um, and we got all of the chips cleaned and back in their spots be careful to make sure you put them in the right direction. We double checked all of the directions, make sure everything's good. Um, we didn't verify the ROMs, but because uh, I didn't want to fire up the setup and everything to mess with that yet. But um, so, and now I'm ready to basically put it back in the in the uh, cabinet and see what's going on. So wish me luck. Okay, so we got our board back in, and this is what we're getting. I didn't get anything on the screen except the dot so I unplugged it so it wouldn't burn anything and then I put it uh, in test mode and on these you have to put it in test mode and then turn it back on the lights were on solid which it's supposed to be in test mode and then I hit the slam switch a few times which is how you advance the screens into the test mode and I got to the audio test screen and it's trying to play audio so basically what's wrong with this game is either the board isn't sending a signal to the monitor or the monitors bad and the sound's bad, so I, I, which is either the board or the amp, uh, probably the board because it's it's making a loud popping noise, not a uh, quiet popping noise. So we got all kinds of issues. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with the monitor and see if I if if uh, I can get it good enough that we get some kind of image on the screen. All right, folks. So I looked in the schematics, and the audio is handled by a pokey on Tempest. There's two pokies. One does the audio, and one does the spinner. And the same pokey that does the audio also does the start buttons. So I was having some weird issues where it wouldn't always start, and the lights would just blink uh, on free play. I couldn't see anything. So I swapped the pokey with a brand new one, and as you can hear, in the test mode, the sound is now working. So we're going to try putting it in the game and see if we can hear the gameplay. Okay, so we put it back in gameplay mode. You can see the lights are blinking. Still nothing on the monitor. If you hit start, of course the monitor's unplugged, which is why, but it's the monitor's messed up. Or the board is not sending out the proper video. Uh, you hit start. The start buttons now work. The game is up and playing. Now the spinner and everything may not be working but you can hear that it's actually doing its thing. So next up, we really need to make sure that the monitor is even uh, capable of working, so we're going to start working on it. All right, folks, we removed the deflection board out of the monitor. And we've been looking at it, and I can't really find much wrong. We do have, this is the low voltage section. They've never replaced these capacitors here, and this resistor here is starting to burn up. But they did do some work replacing some diodes and things in that area. And then also did a bad job with this connector here uh, that they'd put jumper wires and stuff on. But it looks like all of that's connected. Um, they've also at some point reflowed um, the connectors here in the middle. So 
want to check a bunch of stuff, like check the diodes and see if they're good and the, um, all these transistors. But none of the fuses are blown. So I don't see anything jumping out at me. Um, this is the um, spot killer light, they call it, and it's on, which it shouldn't be. It should be off. I'm going to test the transistors on the frame of the uh, uh, monitor, but I believe they're fine. Usually they short, and if they short, it would blow a fuse. So we're going to look through some stuff and uh, see what we can figure out. Again, it could be that the monitor actually works and that the, uh, the game board is not sending out a signal, so we still have to look into that possibility, but we're going to work this over a little bit. Okay, so we worked on it a little bit now. I'm not an expert on vector monitors. There are about 50 upgrades you can do to this thing to make it better, make it more bulletproof, right? But I'm just trying to get the thing running tonight so we can see if the board's working. Uh, so I just did what I had parts here for. The main, the main thing that gets updated on these is this section here. This is the low voltage section. So this is kind of the original design of it. I had the parts to go ahead and put everything back how it was originally, but originally it wasn't super reliable. So um, they make a little kit that goes on here they call an LV2000 that basically, LV for low voltage, it basically replaces all these parts in this area and uh, gets it really re reliable where you really don't have any problems with it. This resistor here, I don't know if you've seen it a second ago, but this resistor was here, so I replaced that with the correct one. Uh, the one next to it was fine, this one was fine, and this one was fine. I replaced the two transistors, although they were still fine, and I replaced them with the original parts. Uh, you can upgrade these to make them a little beefier. That's one upgrade that you can do. Um, the two R104 and R105 are usually actually diodes, so they had these little resistors and diodes rigged up. To the best of my knowledge, that's not really a good idea. So I put a, uh, I think it's a 4750 diode in both of those, which if you look online, they say that that's probably the best way to do that. Uh, the two diodes beside it, someone had already replaced. I replaced the two capacitors, but they say usually those don't go bad. But they're awful damn old, people, so I went ahead and replaced them. They're 470 UF 35 volt caps, which are real common, and I've got tons of The diodes here... Uh, someone else had already replaced, so I left those alone. Uh, I replaced uh, this resistor because the original one's a little bit undersized and it gets burnt up a little bit. So I went ahead and replaced that. And then there are, in this section, uh, there are four little tantalum caps in it originally. Um, let me see if I can find one of them. These little bad boys. Tantalum caps are really bad about shorting. So uh, they will short inside to where they're completely connected a dead short. So I didn't test these or anything, but uh, you can take these out. They're 0.47 UF and replace them with a 1 UF, just electrolytic capacitor, which, I've, again, I've got tons of, so that was an easy thing to do. So I just did a few little things. Um, on the back, I reflowed all of the connectors again, and then I went over their jumpers that they had put on. Someone basically ripped this connector right out of it. But I went over their jumpers and everything's done well. So I left that alone. So I am going to try putting this back in the game and seeing if we can get a picture. Uh, I'll probably end up ordering one of these low voltage uh, boards for it because that's a really good idea on these. Oh, I also resoldered the uh, these transistors on these four heat sinks. Those get hit around a lot and so it breaks the solder joints on the bottom. Uh, and I tested the tra all the transistors and diodes I could find. Couldn't find any of them out of spec. Everything seemed fine. They could I could have missed something or something still messed up. So we're going to try uh, putting it in the machine and see if we get anything different. All right, folks. So we put it back in. Listen carefully. That's called vector chatter. That's what you want to hear. And if you notice, the um, the light is off because still a little bright but the monitor is up and running and the game is too some of the sounds are missing so we still got to mess with that and 
the spinner is intermediate intermediate um, which the pokey runs the spinner and the sound the other pokey it's making me think we might have a pokey problem again but the next thing we need to do is do the high voltage uh, unit and how did I actually I beat, I beat the board without uh, moving um, so the next thing we need to do is work on the high voltage unit so we will pop that out and see what's going on all right folks so we have pulled out the high voltage unit and uh, taken the cage off of it and somebody's of course already been basically if you get one of these and it's still up and running somebody must have worked on it so they've they've replaced some capacitors and stuff in here so we're going to start working through it though and freshening it all up i have the uh, a uh, some paperwork from the wells Go wells garner color vector monitor fac frequently asked questions and it tells you all about all the little upgrades you should do to the high voltage unit and the deflection board and all of that so we're going to follow some of that and get this thing uh, fixed up and then when it, once you get it in you have to adjust this high voltage um, um, setting which if you don't have a high voltage probe you can actually do it through the cage by testing a, a reference voltage on the neck board. Oh, we, we also took the neck board off and there was a one capacitor on it that we replaced. There's really not much that you update on those, so I didn't videotape it, but um, I'm just showing you what this looks like beforehand. And I'm gonna see what all parts we have where we can freshen that up a little bit. And then uh, we'll be back. Okay, folks, so while I was looking through this, I was replacing all the stuff that had already been replaced and I found this R903. It looks like it has burnt up in the past and they replaced the resistor but they put the wrong damn resistor in it's supposed to be a 3.9 ohm which i have here half watt and they put in a 3.9 k resistor which is 3.9 thousand so instead of three they put in 3900 so that's a little off which will probably cause all kinds of problems which probably has something to do with our brightness so I'm going to replace that with the right one and uh, keep doing my other caps and stuff and working through it. And then we'll pop it back in and see uh, see what happens. All right, folks, I was able to remove that top piece, take the high voltage out. Of course, you saw that earlier. Um, the, where I was showing you on the uh, voltage, regulator part, voltage regulator part in the middle, several of those resistors that had been replaced were the wrong resistors so they had put they kept making the same mistake it would say that it needed a hundred K and they would put in a hundred ohm so if, if you're doing this if it says a hundred K that means a hundred thousand K stands for thousand so if it says a hundred ohm uh, that's a hundred and if it says a hundred K ohm that's literally a thousand times more so they had the wrong resistors in the wrong places um, so I picked a fixed three or four of those um, and uh, after doing that, uh, if you, you know, on these, see this plug right here that I'm pointing at? Bzz, bzz, I'm actually nowhere near the board. It's an optical illusion. <laughs> this plug right here on the side, you can easily get to the pins on the bottom. One of those is the B plus, and it should be around 180, 181 volts. So if you measure between ground on the neck board and that B plus, you should have like 180 volts. The way you can adjust that is to adjust the high voltage in the cage like we were talking about. You can slide a screwdriver through there. Whenever I got it all done and put back together, the B plus was at 179 volts. So I just left it alone because it's close enough. And uh, the B plus kind of tracks with the high voltage. So if, the, if your B plus is close like that, then your high voltage is close too. So after doing that, I booted it up into uh, game mode and went into the test mode. So let me turn off the lights and I'll show you how that kind of works. Tempest has a really cool test mode. And a really cool attract mode. So the way you adjust the monitor is you put it in test and uh, this first one uh, uh, just shows you some statistics and stuff. But if you look, it says press fire and zap for self-test. So, okay, so this is the test mode. Uh, whenever you hit buttons, it will make noises and stuff. 
that one's how it's going on and off. That's the fire button. That means that the switch needs cleaned. But anyway, you can test all your buttons by doing that. This one that's on is the one dip switch that I have on. And then this F is the spinner. So if you if you go into this test and there's any other numbers, if there's a number over here, if there's a number up here, or letter, uh, that means uh, that there's an error. And it'll tell you in the manual what those letters stand for. If you hear a bunch of beeps, it'll go like beep, beep, boop, something like that. It's telling you which RAM chip's bad. So to advance to the next screen, you hit the slam switch, which is this switch on the coin door. Uh, lights are off, but there's a little switch on the back of the coin door. Whenever you hit that during the game, it resets the game, but if you do it during the test mode, it takes you into the next screen. So this is just a crosshatch screen you can use to adjust all of your uh, uh, your sizes. Uh, you, you need to adjust where the lines line up. It tells you in the manual how to do this, but it's kind of hard to find. It's in the uh, it's in the schematic section of the manual. So you try to get all the lines to the to end at the uh, edge. Sometimes they'll go past. So there's a, a BIP uh, knob for each direction on the game board. The monitor doesn't have all that many adjustments. It's all on the game board. It's the signal that the vector game board sent into it. So uh, you, you re adjust the, B the BIP uh, knobs. If you look closely, the convergence is slightly off on the left side. So see how the blue doesn't line up with the uh, the green and the red line there that you can't really see. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Um, so you use this, once you get uh, your sizes and everything adjusted, you can go to the next screen here. Now it was giving me half of those. So I, were get, I was getting the four, but here I was two of each. Dun, 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 dun. Mine was just going dun, 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 which I thought was right, but one of the one set of the sounds was was missing. So the reason for that was because uh, there are two pokies on it. Remember, we replaced the one, which brought back the sound. So I thought it was fixed, but it only brought back half the sounds. So uh, the spinner wasn't working right. And the other half of the sounds were missing, so I replaced a second pokey and it made it work. Uh, this screen here uh, is used to adjust the different colors. So you've got green, blue, and red. And if you look really close, you can see that there are six lines. And so you want to adjust it where the left one is almost where you can't see it, and the right one is very bright. They may even... I should have read that. They may even want you to adjust it where the left one disappears. I don't know. Uh, but basically you adjust the three until you get the white looking really good. And it does. And now this screen here is the one that you can use for convergence. So you turn the spinner and it changes the color. And then it gets to like this one. This is red and blue together. See how they're off just a little bit on the left side? There is a, an adjustment on the monitor, on the yoke, uh, to adjust those. So the way you do it is you get it where it's good in the middle. So in the middle we're good. You, you can't even tell where the lines are. It's just purple. The reason it's off a little bit is because I don't have the convergence perfect and the purity I don't have perfect. So this is it's very tricky to get that just right. So what I'm basically telling you is that this is so close that I'm completely happy with it. So you there's a... Uh, one set of rings for the red and the blue to get them to line up, and then you turn it until you get white, which is red, blue, and green all together. It can only do three colors. And uh, you turn the, the last set of rings to make the green line up with the red and the blue in the center of the screen to make it nice and white. So it looks pretty good. And then this is just a box. And then we're back to the main screen. So, take it out of test. 
and the monitor is looking pretty good, right? Got all of our sounds back. Trying to play with one hand is very tough, people. They got me. All right, so there we go. Um, all right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of the cosmetic stuff, and I will film a little bit of that too. So, uh, moving on. Okay, folks, we've begun doing a little cosmetic work on it. I figured I'd show you something on the monitor. So this has a really dark tinted bezel on the front of it that hides the tube where you can't really see it. Uh, but you take that off, of course, and you're down to the tube. If you look close, it's got Major Havoc burn in. You may be able to read that there. Major Havoc. And it's also, of course, got Tempest burn in. It says Tempest. You can barely read it. And then look at this. That is a, a vector burn hole. Basically, you saw in the, uh, the earlier part of the video where uh, uh, the monitor wasn't up and there was just a dot in the center of the screen. If you leave it like that too long, now I didn't do it. It's, it's probably been like this for 15 years. But if you leave it like that for too long, it will burn a little hole in the phosphor in the back of the tube, on the back of the tube. And this one is so bad, it's permanently, that part is permanently gone. So whenever you play the game, uh, if you, uh, there are certain parts where there'll be like a line, if it goes right through it where it hits that, there's it's just black, the line's not there. So I figured I'd show you what bad vector burn-in looks like. Now, it's, it's such a minor issue with the bezel on it that we're not gonna replace it, but you can swap in, or I think you can swap in a regular tube I may have that wrong. It may have to be a vector too, but we're not going to do it either way. So um, the the uh, the burn in will stay. It's not major enough that the game's unplayable or anything. And then another thing, we've been doing a little bit of uh, work on the cabinet. Uh, we did a little bondo work here, and then what we did was we painted a black border all the way around it, which is not factory, but come on, folks, this one was pretty rough. So, you know, a collector's not going to buy it anyway. So, we put some black trim on it. I think it made it look pretty good. You'll see the finished product here shortly. And then we're also going to put purple T-molding on it, which usually on really classic games like this, we don't do that. We just use the original T-molding. But the problem is, is the original T-molding was black, and if you've got black on black, it just doesn't look very good. So we're going to put a little color on it. Again... The thing's not in good enough shape that a collector is going to buy it, so we're just trying to make it look as good as possible. So that's where we are. We'll uh, we'll button it all up, finish it all up with the new T molding, and film a little video for you of how it turned out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we have finished it up, got it up and running, got it cosmetically about as good as we could get it, and it turned out pretty good, really. Man, it's a fun game. Very hard though. Of course, we've filmed videos on here before playing Tempest, and I'm sure everybody's played it. But you can see how the purple T-molding turned out. We kind of had to do that since we painted the edges black, which we kind of had to do because if you the white wouldn't have worked. <laughs> so we kind of we altered it a little bit, and then since there was so much black on it, we put the T-molding on it to lighten it up a little bit. Usually, it would have black T-molding. But it's the original side art, original control panel overlay, which is in pretty good shape, a little faded. A little bit of wear on the corner here, a little bit. Um, same on this side, original side art. Painted the, basically cut off all of the fuzzy white where the cabinet had swollen. Um, the proper way to do it would be to replace the whole damn side, but you know. That's a big job, and then you need to buy the art too, so. We're trying to get the thing saved where it can be played and enjoyed by somebody, not necessarily a collector, because they would get one that, that the cabinet was in very nice shape, but someone who is a Tempest aficionado. So the top, the marquee's pretty good. It's got this place up here where it's got a crack in it, a rip in it. Same thing. We could put a brand new one on it, right? But will that ever make up for the cabinet being rough? And I doubt it. So that's that. And then the back here was the roughest part. And as you can see, what we did was we rebuilt the little 
slide, we put a new top on it, we replaced this piece. Not perfect, our woodworking skills aren't the greatest in the world, but at least it's not fallen slap the heck apart anymore. Now, most important part is she is up and running. Let me see if I can I can't get a spot where it's got a good image. So we better do novice people. Oh, wrong button. As you can see, it's working great. Monitor ended up nice. And all in all, we were able to save it. So if you've got one you're working on, start at the uh, power coming in. Work through the power brick first, make sure it's fine. Then work through the power supply, make sure it's fine. And then you kind of run into a problem with the monitor and the board trying to figure out which one, if, if, if it's not working, trying to figure out which one is uh, if the board's not sending out the signal or if the monitor's just not displaying the signal. So you kind of run into a problem with that. Uh, we didn't go into it, but on the if you can test that by testing the uh, the AC voltage that's coming out of the like the X. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's AC. It may be DC, but by checking the uh, the voltage coming out of the X circuit and the Y circuit. But we didn't have to do it, so we'll save that for another video. But there you go, we've saved the Tempest. I think it turned out pretty nice, what do you think? Leave your comments below, and uh, make sure to subscribe to us if you like repair videos like this. Um, we do them all the time. As you can see, we've got a whole room full of stuff here that we're always working on. We get new stuff every week, so we film videos every week if it's something interesting. Um, leave your comments below, and uh, make sure to check out our website too if you're looking to buy something. We're at, we're at uh, lionsarcade.com, and we've got a website uh, with all of these games displayed on it. Look there. They're coming with a truck to pick up a ton of them. It's going to get busy in here soon, folks. But we're lionsarcade.com. You can check out what we've got for sale. Even if it's years down the road, go check it out. It's always up to date. It'll be up to date five years from now. Now, if you're local, come by and see us. We're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina, which is about 15 miles south of Charlotte, North Carolina. We're over the border. And uh, make sure to subscribe to us, leave your comments below, and we'll see you on the next video.